Hey, it's me, Kelly, the Take Action Wom. I want to talk to you today about something that's been kind of near and dear to my heart the last week or so. <clears throat> and that's blogging. Hey, <laughs> go figure. I'm a blogger. I love to talk about blogging. Um, what's been really kind of pissing me off lately is how many people come to me and say how jealous they are or how lucky I am that, that I get to work at home well, they have to go off to a job, and I'm like, well, you know, that's just a decision that you make. If, if you want to work at home, decide you're going to work at home and start finding a way to do it. And then they say something like, oh, I would love to be a blogger, but, and then they start giving me reasons why they can't. So I made a list of some of the reasons that people have told me why they can't be a blogger. First of all, I'm going to tell you the one reason that someone can't be a blogger and work from home and make money is because they don't want to. That's the only reason. If you really just don't want to, you hate to write, you don't, you don't like being online, you don't want anything to do with it, you don't want to make money for yourself, you don't want to work for yourself, that is a valid reason. If you don't like any of the stuff and you don't want to do it, hey, that's cool. I'm, and I would never try to push this on somebody that that just didn't want to do it. That's fine. That's that's absolutely fine. But what does get me is when people give me excuses like these. And now I'm going to look down at my page here every now and then because I made a list of the reasons so I don't forget anything. <clears throat> and the first one is people tell me, oh, I'd love to be a blogger, but I can't write. I'm like, well, you know, I bet there was a time when Michael Jordan couldn't play basketball either. But he started practicing and he got pretty good. As, now granted, there are some people who have a gift for words or a gift for gab who, who maybe write posts that are better than what you think you can do. But you're not going to know until you get out there and start practicing. This is one of those cases where practice makes perfect, or pretty close to perfect anyways. And that's the key. The thing that will make you, if you feel like you can't write, the thing that will make you better at writing is to go out and write. You just need to start doing it so that you get better. I mean, it, it is a skill that you can learn. Um, I've got a couple of tips that can help people out when they're first starting. One of them is what I've always done is to pretend that when I'm writing, I'm talking to a friend. And I try to write the way that I talk. That's why when I write, a lot of times I put I'm gonna, G-O-N-N-A instead of going to because that's the way I talk. I say I'm gonna go do this or whatever. I don't say I'm going to the store. I say I'm gonna go to the store. So that's the way I write. I try to write in a way that feels comfortable for me in a conversation with a friend. A lot of times I might imagine a certain friend and think that I'm talking to, you know, and imagine like I'm talking to that person and then just write what I think I would say. And then I saw another tip from from one of my mentors, Neve Arthur, who said that, you know, you go on Facebook every day, or most of us do, and you write status updates. Do you ever sit and think to yourself, oh, I can't write a status update. I don't know how to write. Of course not. Write your blog just like if you were writing a status update on Facebook, just like you're talking to your friends. It's the same idea. It's taking a situation that you're comfortable with and just moving it to this new format. So that's one myth <laughs> busted. Let's move on. Um, no one cares about my story. I used to think that. When I started my first blog, uh, which was my life in Peru, after I moved here to Peru, I honestly thought no one would ever read it except my mom and maybe my sister would visit once a month or so. Um, I, because I was just writing about things I went through as an American who had moved to Peru. And I wrote about um, food. I was learning to, to love Peruvian food. I was learning how to cook the cuisine here. So I wrote about recipes and things that I learned um, with that and different deals I went through with red tape with the government and traveling things we went places we went to visit and I really thought that nobody would be interested in except maybe my mom and a couple of friends my sister and I kept believing that until one day I looked at my stats and realized I was getting over 10,000 people to my blog a month I think at my highest point I was having about 15,000 people a month and who knew <laughs> And the point is that everybody has a story to tell. And there are people out there who are interested in hearing your story. So don't let that, don't let the idea that you think you don't have anything to share stop you from sharing. Share it anyway. And I bet you that the people who need to hear your story are going to find you. 
So that's myth number two, vested. Moving on, um, what this kind of goes in line with number two, and it's what makes me so special? Well, that's a good point, and I could ask you right now, what makes me so special that you're here watching this video? Um, nothing. There's nothing that makes me special. There are thousands and thousands of other people making videos and making blog posts about this very topic, about how people can get out and blog, and different blogging topics. I'm no better, no worse than any of them, but I do come at this from my own point of view, from my own perspective. And I might say the same thing as Joe Blogger, but Joe Blogger's coming at it from his point of view and his perspective. His point of view may not click with you. Mine might. On the other hand, mine might not click with you. You might be watching this going, yeah, whatever, and click off. Then find Joe Blogger. He says the same thing, but something about the way he says it clicks with you. So that's what makes you special, is that you have your own unique perspective on whatever it is that you're talking about. So don't ever think that um, there's nothing about you that would interest anybody because there is, and you can say, um, you know, I deal with a lot, I talk to a lot of um, mommy bloggers and work at home moms, um, and each one of them, I mean, they're all a lot of us blog about being a work at home mom, and it's it's a very common topic of blogs these days, mommy bloggers. Um, <clears throat> but the key is having your own point of view, your own perspective that you come at it from. You may be a work at home mom with a special needs kid. You may be a work at home mom with three kids under under and under the age of five, or you know you might have multiples. You may just be the mom of a super awesome kid, um, or your special thing might not have anything to do with your kids. Maybe you love to knit. Maybe you love to crochet. Maybe you run a pet rescue. I mean, there's a million different things that make each work at home mom unique. And that's what you need to talk about. Incorporate that into your story. Let people know who you are. And by golly, you're going to find other people who are either like you or want to be like you or respect what you do and so want to hear your story. Okay, so that's myth number three. Busted. Let's move on to number four. This one isn't so much of a myth as it is um, a fear or a doubt, and that's what if I screw up? Well, guess what? You're going to screw up. It happens, and there's no point in being afraid of it because you just got to let it happen and then move on. You learn from it, and you move on. I was uh, writing a blog post about a, a kind of a cocadas, which is a Peruvian coconut cookie, kind of like a macaroon. Is that the right word? Macaroon? Macaroon? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Coconut macaroons. Yeah, that's right, right? Okay. Um, and in the recipe, I gave the measurement for the shredded coconut as one cup. And that was wrong. It should have been eight ounces. Now, there are eight ounces in a cup, but those are eight fluid ounces. And this should have been eight ounces by weight, which is half a pound. Um, and some people tried my recipe, and it came out terrible. It was all runny and good because they didn't have enough and it just kind of spread out over the whole pan. It didn't. It was awful. I was embarrassed. I felt so bad. I mean, I ruined their cookies and ruined their coconut, ruined their eggs. It's like, ah, I'm so sorry. I apologized. I fixed my recipe and I moved on with my life. I don't sit and whine about it or feel like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I can never write another blog post again. It's just a big deal. You make a mistake, you fix it, you move on. You don't let it define you as a blogger just because you made a little mistake. So that's that one out of the way. And the final one I'm going to talk about here is, what if people make fun of me? What if people are mean to me? And that's another fear that keeps people from blogging, is, is they're afraid of putting their story out there and afraid of having people make fun of them. And I'll tell you, there are some real jackasses out there in internet land who are going to do that. There are people who will make fun of you. I know there are people that make fun of me. I know there's this guy who actually has a blog where he makes fun of me and some of my friends because he's got a problem with us. Um, he likes to Photoshop pictures of us and make us look ugly. He's criticized me as a mother to my kids because I call them my kids instead of my stepkids. I'm like, who cares? They're my kids. Um, anyway, so, but I only know this because people have told me I don't go looking for his blog. I don't care what he has to say. His opinion of me isn't my problem. It isn't my business. It doesn't affect me. 
and I, I've seen this uh, statement on Facebook a few times where it says, I don't have time to hate the people that hate me because I'm too busy loving the people that love me. And that's exactly how I feel about it. I don't have time for the haters. And, 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 and what's really cool about having a blog is that, you know, as you share your story and talk about yourself and you find these people who connect with you, you, you start building this little tribe and you start making these connections with people who support you and love you and care about you. And God have mercy on some troll who comes to your blog and tries to give you a hard time or starts talking bad about you because these people are going to have your back and they're going to come down on them. They're not going to let anybody mess with you when you're their person. You know what I mean? They are your people. You are their person. Um, so you don't need to be afraid of that. These people, anybody that has anything bad to say about you, whether it's in your blog comments, on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever, they're not your problem. Let them go live in their little world of hate and you keep on being happy and doing what you're doing and sharing your story. So that's my deal today. That's what I've got for you. If you want to learn more about me and what I do, you can click the linky that's under this in the comments or right in the about or whatever section it is. Um, and until then, keep living your passions and keep taking action. Talk to you later.